Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of No More Kids in Scientology. This is our continued reaction to Mike Winder answers Miriam Francis allegations. Yeah. So, and and I think that it's it's so important. I I was you know when I first heard that that there was a restriction on how much time you had to to make a claim against somebody who had done this. It, it's sort of there are some things that should not have any statute of limitations and anything any harm that is done to children you should not be protected you shouldn't be able to go five years or ten years or, or any period of time and say well i'm no longer guilty um, right despicable so yeah, absolutely the, I, you know we this is i believe our 13th and i hope it's going to be lucky i, th I think it's our 13th conversation <laughs> on record Isn't that great, you guys, that this is their 13th conversation? And I think this is your most unlucky conversation, John Atak. I think that you called yourself out on that 13th number. Coming a little bit unlucky because you know what? You are being questioned now. You are advocating on behalf of the man that you're sitting right next to. And you have, in fact, missed all of his withholds. Remember those? Withholds, things you don't want anyone to know about you. So those are the withholds that you are missing, John Atak. And let's give everyone a literal example of what it means to miss a withhold, what it means to have no confront, what it means to not be able to pull a single string. Let's check out what that exactly looks like, you guys, here. And um, so I, I think I know you reasonably well, and, and I think I'd be right in saying that you're a relatively intelligent human being. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> um, Very funny, huh? Very, very funny. And yeah, Mike Rinder, you don't have to answer that and laugh away all you want. Because you know what? Right about now, we actually do second John Atak's description of you. We actually agree with him that you are very, very intelligent. But you know what? Sometimes your intelligence is what in the hell you weaponized against you. And that is the problem with the cons. People that run a big confidence game believe that this whitewashing, gaslighting interview was supposed to really hold up to a shred of scrutiny. Because you know what? Right about now, this is a horrific interview where, I mean, we literally couldn't have directed this to go more wrong than both of you are proving yourselves to be completely tone deaf and to be completely just like obsessed with being right about what? We really do invite you to ask yourselves that question. What do you want to be right about? Because the more you try to be right about something that is unbelievably wrong, you might be really spinning your wheels and that intelligence might be coming and doing you in right about now. So the idea that if you were yourself guilty of an offense or a cover-up of an offense, by fighting to get the statutes of limitations lifted, you would be putting yourself in the firing line if you were guilty. That's correct? 
Yes, that's correct, obviously. Would... Well, isn't that great, you guys? See, this is why lawyers tell clients to shut the F up, specifically clients that might be, you know, compromised given their past track record. What is it? 1963 to 2007. Imagine you have that much skin in the game and your name is Mike Rinder. And imagine that your little friend that thought was doing you a big solid here by putting on a public record that you, Mike Rinder, would have nothing to do with anything, any type of cover-ups of abuse of children. Imagine that he is literally pitching you a lie and you are agreeing with him. And what is that lie? That lie is the fact that, yes, you are in charge of knowing all about the statutes of limitation. And yes, imagine you still chose for three years to not pick up the phone and call Miriam and say, yo, Miriam, I joined the board of Child USA. And believe it or not, I'm working with Marcy Hamilton. And believe it or not, we just opened a three-year window to, believe it or not, California. So you should get on the phone and talk to a civil attorney because the problem that you were concerned about not being able to file charges since the statutes of limitations had run out is no longer a concern. Yes, you can thank me later. I just wanted to make this phone call because I want to advocate for you so badly because I do want to see you get a shred of justice. So go get that civil lawsuit going. It doesn't matter, Miriam, that you have a criminal lawsuit going already. It doesn't matter there's a criminal investigation going. Get yourself a civil attorney. Oh, don't expect me to refer you to anyone. I'm too busy because I am saving another world. And I'm part of two boards. So don't bother making me help you other than telling you to go get yourself some help. Okay? Better luck next lifetime. Bye. Imagine that's all that you, my Grinder, would have had to do to get Miriam help. Something that counts, you know? Something that actually is a tangible action you have done in the physical universe to truly advocate for a child. But imagine you knowing all about the statutes of limitations. You kept your eyes, your ears, and your mouth Silence, silence. Let's not tell anybody that this is a thing because, you know, God forbid the word goes out and God forbid that any and all survivors of child essay in California that may or may have not been abused while I was there knowing all about it could get a shred of help. But imagine you, I guess, were too busy doing stuff. I mean, you weren't handling the Lisa McPherson thing anymore and you weren't in the hole anymore. But imagine with you not being in those two places, which are your go-to, every time that you get pressed about, well, didn't you know about this? No, I was in the hole. Well, didn't you know about that? Oh, no, I was, you know, covering up Lisa McPherson's death. So imagine this happened at a time when you were not even a consenting slave anymore. By now, you have renounced being a consistent, willing slave. 
You run your own show, don't you, Mike Rinder? And imagine you running your own show. You're still always choosing to do the wrong thing. Damn. Damn. Would be deeply irrational. And, yes. I mean, but you it, were in Scientology, was, so. Deeply irrational. It would be deeply irrational. It is. And again, you guys can see the body language for your damn selves, literally. <laughs> I, I have done irrational things in my life, John. I, you know, I continue to do irrational things. Uh... Well, thank you for getting that on the record, Mike Grinder. I think we finally caught you not telling a lie, but telling the truth. You are doing irrational AF stuff. Irrational is that you continue to lie. Irrational is that you didn't call Miriam and say, yo, get a civil attorney. There's a three-year open window for you to literally get a shred of justice. Imagine, literally, in what world did Marcy Hamilton not tell you? Wasn't there a girl that was on your show that was abused in California? Wasn't she one of the seasons that you produced? You found out all this information. Didn't she go to the LAPD? Doesn't she have a criminal investigation going? Imagine neither you nor her thought about her. Isn't that interesting, you guys? That no one thought about it. And this man um, who says he does a lot of irrational things, well, I guess it's great that we have that on the record. Now, Mike Grinder, it's great to know that you are willing to call yourself out for doing highly irrational things. Um, but that one would take some real, um, that one would take some real, like I'd have to be hit over the head a few times with a hammer before, mm -hmm that would be something that I wouldn't recognize was not uh, probably the brightest move. Well, isn't that great? I mean, again, you guys, this is why criminal defense attorneys that advise clients to keep their mouths shut. So, if we didn't have any admissions of Mike Rinder liking it rough, I think he just gave us that admission. So thank you for that. Thank you again, Mike Rinder. Thank you. You would have to be hit with a hammer. Imagine you've been hit by a literal hammer. I mean, your admissions right now and your actions and your receipts are on full literal display. So, I mean, what else can you possibly say? Yeah, and in this specific case, Miriam Francis, M Miriam has said that she filed charges in 2012 in Australia against her abusive father. And uh, in 2017, she flew was flown by A&D, um, from Australia to Los Angeles to do an aftermath show in the second season, I think. And um, you and Leah sat down with her and said, we think you should report this to the LAPD and um, helped her, took her to the, the police. So you'd be doubly stupid if you were actually getting somebody who you had, you know, had some involvement in, in harming to, to report this thing and then going and campaigning. So. This is this is a serious contradiction if such a thing has happened. Um, Miriam has said, in, 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 and this has all happened very rapidly, it's only... You would be triply stupid. Like, we're at triple now, you guys. 
triple. Triply stupid to have done this interview. Triply stupid to be literally putting this man right here, throwing you all manner of bones as you literally look like you don't even know what in the literal hell to say anymore. Yeah, I think on Saturday that, that, that I saw this and I asked Miriam to, to send me statements she read out on <clears throat> escaping down the rabbit hole. And she feels that... Little smear. Mike Winder really gets off on smiling whenever that name is mentioned. Not great, you guys, that we can catch body language as if we weren't interrogating grown adults for a living, Mike Winder. What do you think we had to do, those children that were interrogating adults, with a literal G-U-N next to our temple if we missed? They weren't allowed to miss. Remember that? Remember that part when we weren't allowed to miss any withholds? You know, from that statement, she was bullied um, into making a statement um, and, and going into details of her abuse. And we have to have sympathy for that. By the show? Is yeah. That, yeah. The she's show saying bullied her the, into making the produce, statements? The producer... Um, insisted on having more details than she was willing to offer. Are you really that shocked, Mike Rinder? Because by the show, who are you yelling and screaming at in that show? I mean, never mind that it wasn't you who literally did that to Nora, your producer, but um, you're very acting shocked why are you acting so shocked what is it that you don't already know for yourself that you're playing dumb about because it would be great for you to do another video with john atac and clarify that right there at the time okay um and and it's for her to judge how she feels about that of course um and but, but oh well i'm glad i'm so glad that um, finally we found common ground, you guys, breaking news, breaking news. We found common ground. It's up to Miriam to feel the way she wants to feel. And she has the approval of John Atak and Mike Literal Rinder to do so. So I'm glad that Miriam, you have a lot to be thankful for today. Because you can feel however you want to feel. And breaking news to you, John Atak and Mike Rinder agree with you on that. We have to say that she'd been flown from Australia. She knew she was there to talk about it. Having She'd been flown. She'd been flown. Do you guys notice? Or is it just literally me? Like, do you think, John Atak, that you're doing us a big favor by bringing a child abuse survivor from another country that is going to leave her two children behind? that is going to take the time to go to your show, something she's not getting paid for, something there's no financial reward for her whatsoever. There was a financial reward for the man that you're sitting right next to. There was a financial huge reward for Leah Remini. There were all manner of financial rewards. Those were not the rewards that Miriam was looking for when she boarded that plane. So, Keep underlining, highlining, and underscoring what a great thing was done. As if, as if this show did a, they wouldn't have a show without people willing to expose the trauma. Because yes, breaking news to you, believe it or not, those of us that were abused as children inside of that hotel, those of us that had that disgusting, unthinkable, horrific experience didn't give an F about going to the show. We are giving an F that is still being done to children. 
Nothing changes. Imagine since we left John Atak, and you should really do your research since you claim to be all about doing research. Find out the circumstances of those kids today. And now that you're on the board with Mike Rinder and Claire Headley, ask them what could have changed between them walking out of the threshold of the hotel they left. And now tell them what changed in that gap for the treatment of all current kids who have been signed up for a billion year contract inside of the hotel. Because that would be the question that you should be asking, not all your stupid reframing that you must have been trained by Mike Rinder. Give it up to him. But he really thought that, let me keep yapping and opening my mouth so that I can come across more credible as if you don't have people that can read who you are, Mike Rinder, as if we don't exist. It's all that this is, keeps on giving because that's how you always act. You're the only one that knows. You're the only one that can have an opinion about anything. And you'll use whoever useful idiot you can find to do your bidding. Spoken like a true KGB agent. Oops, I mean L. Ron Hubbard, protege, willing slave, pro bono publicist that you were. Imagine being you. Being dealt with uh, victims of abuse myself a fair few times over the last 40 years, um, there is this difficult situation that. Well, imagine that you have been so dealing with all these victims, John Atek, and apparently you are not trauma informed. And apparently you think that for a trauma victim, leaving their kids and traveling from another continent back to where their essay took place was going to be a great, amazing thing that she should have been so thankful about. So, yeah, let's not beat a dead horse with a bat. But maybe we should literally beat that dead horse with a bat because these people just do not want to get it through their skull. Once somebody has said, okay, I'm going to go on TV, then they have exposed themselves to, you know, a serious, it put themselves in a serious situation. That moves us over to there. Are, Miriam is is making assertions herself. Um, a, I mean, again, you guys, in what trauma informed can Johnny Duck literally? Ugh. So again, they're painting the trauma survivor as if you know Miriam is just you know having a hard time that she's going on TV. That's, that's the thing that she's doing really hard for herself. Going on TV is making her go into a, you know, she's probably unstable because she's going on TV. Right, John Atak? About what happened. The other case that she's mentioning, and she's, as she says, she spent 12 years so far researching this. There are only two cases that have come up so far. So I would say that if, if there are any other cases, please get hold of Miriam. Please tell her about your situation. Wow. Wow. So 12 years and there's only two cases that Miriam was able to research find. Imagine that is the out point, you guys. And just so you remember what an out point is, let's remind you in case anybody forgot what an out point is. It is this, you guys. All right. It is exactly this, it is something that makes no literal sense. Out point in Scientology. So the out point, John Atak, is an out point of omission 
Okay. An out point of omission is something that makes no sense because there's nothing on the record. So the out point of omission is so many kids were essayed inside of those hotels. And if there's no cases, could it possibly be that people have been actively participating in, you know, making sure no case ever arrives to the police? of whom, you know, they stand to make financial rewards if said case doesn't go to the police. If said case gets derailed by Mike Rinder, by Debbie Cook, by Angie Blankenship, by Jenny the Vogt Linson, by Kathy True, by Kristen Catano, by Mike Rinder, by Shelly Miscavige, by David Miscavige, by all of them. By the senior CSFSO, Richard Reese, Harvey Jakes. Who else do you want to get involved that was incentivized to go, oh, that person, Miriam's dad, just confessed to these felonies. Go get him interrogated and tell him that as soon as he tells us everything, his needle will float and everything is going to be wonderful. Imagine if the Sea Org was not involved, if this was a public, if a public man went and asked the question that was done at every A to J check. And again, you guys, I know it sounds real weird, but it is this what it's called. Okay. And this is done before anyone can go inside of the hotel. It's called an A to J check. What is the question that gets asked on an A to J check? I'm glad y'all asked because the question that you get asked at an A to J check is, have you committed any felonies for which you have not been arrested? So imagine that a public person goes to Mike Rinder's hotel and answers the question, have you committed any felony for which you have not been arrested with a resounding yes, with a resounding disclosing time, place, form, and event, every other last nauseating detail, self-admitted felony that wasn't even done under a session. It wasn't even under, done under the guise of, well, you know, that's a very confidential thing. A to J check was not auditing you. A to J check, have you committed any felony for which you have not been arrested? The person says, yes, I essayed my underage daughter. The person gets told, wonderful, let's write you a program. Let's write you a sec check. Let's get you to pay $50,000 because you're going to need about, you know, 10 intensives. And, you know, if you're not done in 10 intensives, then, you know, we'll write you for another 10 intensives. So we're going to keep making a ton of money with you telling us not just this little tiny thing that you just told us now, because now we're going to want to know everything you've ever done having to do with the subject of essaying minors. It's called monetize the felony. Launder the felony then, because the IRS will come in, swoop to the rescue, and have that self-admitted felon get a tax break, right? Because they go, oh, let me call American Express. Hi, American Express. I'm going to put 100K here. Uh-huh. And you know what? Let me call my business manager as well. Oh, yeah. Hi, business manager. Take 100 grand off of my account because I'm about to go tell them every single aspect of how I have essayed what came up here in the A to J check. Under the question that every single person gets asked, have you committed any felony for which you have not been arrested? LAPD, tell us how that's a religious question by all means. I mean, where are the dots ever going to get connected with you two? Where does the grift end? Down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. Deep down there. Well, you know what? Congratulations for your 13th interview because this is giving Freddy Cougar 
Nightmare on Elmer Fort Harrison Street. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all extremely soon.